Hello, welcome back to part four, the final part of my Crab Trees Corner build. In this video, we'll be frantically finishing up the last bits before heading off to Longceston to deliver this to the Queen Victoria Museum and Gallery for the Miniature World Show. First of all, yes, this video is 23 and a half minutes long. So you're probably wondering, wow, my Lynn, you've edited the shit out of a week's worth of making and to that I say, sorry. <laughs> With one week left, I fought my urges to record every step of the way. Instead, I filmed the interesting parts leading up to the final day that was 36 hours long. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to talk my way through the missing steps, but please leave a comment below if there is anything you'd like me to clarify with a separate video. Okay, so we're tackling the main door now, which is made out of Strathmore tone grey paper. I'm constructing the doorway like I construct the windows by building up the layers onto the back of the facade. The little pipes, wires and what looks like a data or electrical box at the front is also made out of Strathmore tone grey paper. I'm using Selly's Aquadia PVA wood glue to stick all the pieces down. The windows that you can see on the right have been made with Strathmore tone grey paper and acetate. The brown bread tiles you see below is also made out of Strathmore tone grey paper, scored with a needle point tool and then coloured with a wax pencil. If you use a wax pencil to colour in your tiles, the grout lines will remain the original paper colour. I tried to be a bit clever with this building and included the slope that the building sits on so that's why you can see the brown red brick ends short. My builds are always made with a binge watch of a TV series or movie marathons. This build was a binge watch of the first five seasons of Law and Order SVU and Kit Boga and his second channel, More Kit Boga. If you ever need someone to keep you company while you work, listen to Kit Boga take on one scammer at a time. I'm using a very light grey Holbein gouache to paint the doorway. <laughs> and guess who's back? Bread the pug puppy. I know I have so much to do, but a puppy break is required. <laughs> So it's the next day and overnight I finished off the front entrance with the Crab Trees Corner sign on top of the door and I started on the store windows. Oh, and I made the store entrance door with the stained glass bit. The store window is made out of acetate and is glued on with Helmer Tacky Craft Glue. To help keep it in position, I've cut a slit at the top of the box board where I can slide the acetate through. I'm using more Strathmore Tone Grey paper to frame the bottom of the window. Thank you. 
To create the stained glass look, I've drawn out the pattern onto a piece of paper and then I'll use the needlepoint tool to score the pattern onto the acetate. When I'm running the needle along the acetate, the aim is to make a deep enough groove so that when I run a wax pencil over it, the colour will get stuck in the grooves. This creates a bold, distinct line, like the lines of a real stained glass window. I'm using a Posca pencil because it's the waxiest pencil I have in my pencil stash, but any waxy pencil should give you a similar result. I'm using my finger to rub away any pencil markings on the surface of the acetate, leaving just the black in the grooves. I'm using Sharpies to colour the other side of the acetate, so not the black line side. You can use any permanent marker or permanent inks for this. To colour the rest of the glass yellow-orange, I'm flipping back to the black line side, being careful not to rub too hard and remove the black lines, because we don't want that. I'm using washi origami paper in a gold brown colour. It's not the ideal paper type for this because it's really soft and can easily fray while working with it, but it's the only paper I have that matches the goldy brassy look of the real window. I just have to use a new blade when cutting thin strips, uh, passing over it a few times before cutting through it just so that I don't snag the paper and create a jagged edge. And I'm using Helmataki craft glue to apply the strips to the corners. I'm just making another bit of red brown tile. I've already scored the cross lines and using a Posca pencil to colour the lines. To burnish the paper, I'm using my finger and it leaves a glossy tile look. And here's what I prepared behind the scenes. It's the shop front of the barber store. It's made out of a mishmash of papers in different thicknesses and colors to match the real shop front.
Now on to the shop next door. Off camera, I've added more details onto the shop fronts, some signs and the red and white barber stripes, some posters, blinds and the walls to the last shop on the end. Now it's time to glue the bottom shop front to the rest of the facade. This is the tattoo shop on the other side of the building. Uh, it was made with box board, coloured origami paper and the chairs were leftover chairs from the Boundary Street Gallery build. I'll pop a link up the top here and at the end of this video so you can check out how to make the chairs. The window signs are made with the same technique as the stained glass windows using the needlepoint tool to etch the pattern onto the acetate and then rubbing a white waxy pencil over the lines. All the very tiny posters were cut up bits of printed images of my previous Fairfield buildings. I had printed way too many copies so I've kept them to use as greeblies. This big poster was hand painted using gouache. The carpet in the office is made with Mitons paper. It has a nice soft texture that mimics low pile carpets so very nicely. Okay, so we're jumping over to our last day. Tomorrow morning we fly to Longceston. We have a mental list of what we need to do and we are feeling very confident that it's gonna be done. Off screen we have made the back and raided our aircon stash. This is why it's so handy to make things like the aircon units in bulk. Every building has at least one and they come pretty much the same. So if you have a stash of them you can quickly pop one on and then add a logo to customise it. I have a separate video on how to make aircon units which I'll pop a link at the top of the screen and at the end of the video. I'm cutting out a piece of tracing paper or vellum to place behind the window. This is to block the view of the insides of the building. I'm not entirely sure what's in these rooms because I couldn't find any images of them. So we're going to block them up. And let's be real and frank, we don't have time to deck out these rooms with a full interior. So blocking the windows gives me less temptation to spend an hour that I don't have on furniture. And it's such a shame that I wasn't able to film the making of this back since it was the main reason why I chose this building. But hopefully the tips and tricks shown in the first three parts of this build can help you see how I tackle the elements of this back. But do let me know in the comments below if you want me to explain how I did a specific detail of this.
I've stuck a piece of boxboard in the middle of the building just to give it a bit of support and make the building a little bit heavier. It's 6 p.m. and we are looking good. And now for the roof. This roof was a bit of math and a lot of folding and trimming as I went along. I used a craft card in 200 GSM to give the roof a bit more strength and now I'm laying down some paper for the gutter. For the window, for the window, for the roof, for the roof window, <laughs> skylight, I've cut a piece of acetate and scored lines on it with a ballpoint tool to mimic a clear corrugated piece. And I'm using AK Wolverine PVA glue to stick the plastic down onto the card. For the metal corrugated roof, I'm using a piece of metallic card that I've scored lines with a ballpoint tool. And I'm just checking to make sure it fits before adding the other two panels of the corrugated metallic card. I didn't block the upstairs windows, so for the people who happen to look through the windows, I've popped a secret clubhouse meeting area made of chairs from previous builds. Uh, the floor is lined with paper that has a printed faux wood texture. And the tree, which I'm going to say is a crab apple tree, hey, get it? <laughs> was an extra tree I made for the Boundary Street Gallery build. You can watch how I made it in the link above. So I kept working and finished at 4.27 a.m. But look at it, I'm so, so, so stoked. I quickly packed and I went to the airport at 5.30 a.m. I am always amazed and so, so glad when I get to hold up the miniature up to the real building. Always slightly worried that I've missed a bit, especially when a lot of things can be added or removed while I'm in the process of making. But I'm happy to say that I only missed out on one little part. It's the little yellow and black stripe panel that sits on the awning so that the trucks could take caution when driving past. I brought along my mini workstation so that I can put on the last little elements of the build, which are the antennas. There was no way I could have made them and delivered them safely on the plane without some sort of extreme packing. So I decided to make them when I got to the gallery. Check the link above to see how to make the antenna. And that's it. It's done. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for joining me on the Crabtree's Corner Making Journey. It's been such a pleasure being able to show you the process of making this, and I hope you can use some of the techniques and processes in your projects. 
A huge thank you to QB Mag and Ashley Bird, QB Mag's curator, Joshua Smith, the co-curator of Miniature World and featured artists for letting me be part of this show. Please head over to my Instagram account to see more photos of the show. I am so humbled to be able to show my work with such amazing artists like Joshua and David, who made an amazingly detailed replica of Gasworks building in Longceston. If you like this series and want to see more, please like and subscribe. Ugh. Head over to my Patreon where you can support me and this channel and also learn how to make a building with step-by-step -step video instructions and downloadable templates. Thanks so much again for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. And I nearly forgot those promise links. Here's where you can find the how to of the antenna, aircon unit and the chairs. The how to make a tree is in the same video as the chairs.